There are several common blocks that are typically used over and over and over again. Many of these blocks being the basic building blocks, which are the AND, OR, or NOT block. Going through the truth table of an AND block, we'll see that there's two inputs on this particular AND block, although an AND block can have multiple inputs. Simply, if the input is 0 and 0, your output is going to be 0. Until all of your inputs are all 1, you won't get an output of 1. So all of these inputs must be 1 in an AND block to make a 1 on the output side of the AND block. So it has to be 1 and 1 and 1 and 1, etc. If there's any input that's a 0, your output will be 0. For the OR block, you need to have just one input have a value of 1 for the output to have a value of 1. The only case an OR block will be 0 on the output is when every single input is 0. For the no or NOT block, we're simply inverting our input. So a 0 becomes a 1, and a 1 becomes a 0. Another method of doing NOT or INVERT is to utilize the INVERT circle you may see on some inputs. For example, if we go back to the OR block, we'll notice that there's a little circle on this input pin. That actually means it's inverted. So if a zero is coming into this pin, the block sees that value as a one. The structure for the ladder diagram of an AND and an OR are similar to these pictures. So in a function block, the function block is just that. It's one block with an AND or an OR. But in ladder diagram, we need to tie the, the coils and the registers uh, together to make our ANDs or ORs. So in the first picture, we have an N1 and an N2. So both N1 and N2 have to be energized or one state to make our output one. If any one of these are zero or they're both zero or off, our output will never get energized. That makes an AND function within the ladder diagram. For the OR function, we have a parallel layout of the N1 and the N2. So if either N1 or N2 or both inputs are one or energized, then our output will become a one or become energized. This can continue for multiple ORs, which can be parallel branched into this, uh, into the existing N1, N2. Similar to the AND block, we can put multiple inputs in series to make a larger AND. And then we can also mix and match our AND ORs to make it N1 and N3 or N2 to make a combination for our output to be set. Other function blocks, such as basic arithmetic blocks, include the add, subtract, multiply, and divide. It used to be that you had to use the correct block for each data type in older software, such as the add integer or add real. But in the new, newer Unity software, you can simply use the add block, and it'll automatically determine which data type it's adding. Of course, you can only use the same data types. For example, if you're adding a real, you must have a real as both inputs or multiple inputs, and the output must be a real data type as well. If you try to link up an incorrect data type, such as an integer with a real, you'll notice you'll get an error. Although the individual add int add real data types are available within Unity, it's sufficient to use just the add block as well. Here's an example of the different add, subtract, multiply, and divide blocks. 
the add and multiply bo blocks can be extended more past two inputs. However, the subtract and divide blocks may not be extended past two inputs, although you can chain multiple subtract or divide blocks together. Basic comparison blocks are equal, not equal, less than, less than or equal to, which is des designated by LE, greater than, and greater than or equal to. Similar to the basic arithmetic blocks, we had different blocks per data type. Again, in the newer Unity software, you can utilize the EQ or NE block without the data type extension, but again, it must have all the same data type on that particular block, otherwise you'll get an error. Here's a quick depiction in function block diagram of the different types of blocks and which ones can and can't be extended. Some basic timer blocks include the TON for timer on, TOF for timer off, and TP for time pulse. In this example, we have a timer on in the function block diagram. When the input is on or energized, the timer, internal timer, begins timing. There's a 30 second preset time, and there's also an elapsed time, which will show us our current count. Once the 30 second time is reached, our queue or output will be energized, showing that the time has been reached. The timer will continue timing until the trigger turns off. Once the trigger turns off, or input turns off, our elapsed time will reset back to zero. Some basic latch blocks are SR, or set reset, and RS, or reset set, which means in SR the set is dominant. So if S and R are both set, for example in this ladder diagram, we'll notice that if the set and the reset are both energized, our set still is the dominant input and will leave the latch or output energized. However, if in an RS type of logic, the reset will be dominant. So if both set and reset are energized, the reset will become the dominant output and it'll turn the output zero. Some basic counter blocks include the CTU or count up, CTD or count down, and CTUD which is count up down which allows us to, to set the input and change the counter to be able to go up or down based on which input it's energizing. Some selection blocks include limit, min, max, which determines the minimum of, a, of several inputs or the maximum of several inputs, a mux or multiplexer, which will allow a selection of a particular input based on the value and a SEL or select block. So we'll see here our limit block takes an input and limits that input between the min and the max. If it's zero min to max of 100 and our input is 150, then our output will just be 100 as it gets limited to the max. The min block will simply take several inputs and output whichever one is the minimum value. Maximum does something similar where it outputs the maximum value. The mux block will take this K input, which is our selector input, and determines which of these input pins, which value will be set to the output. So for example, if this K value was zero, this first pin 
would be output here. If it was 1, the second pin would be output here. 2, 3, 4, so on. So whatever the input value is on this K will determine which value is represented on the output. The select block is just a digital selection block similar to the MUX or multiplexer. It's only an on or an off. When the G is 0, whatever input 0 is will, will be shown on the output and when the G is a value of 1 or true, the input 1 value will be shown on the output side of this block. Common conversion blocks include int to real, real to int, bit to word, or word to bit. Some examples of these blocks are shown here, which simply converts one data type to another data type. In the case of bit to word, we have to input the s several bits into the function block, which will then output it into one word 